Good morning and welcome to our morning devotion as we begin our Friday. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we'll consider the words of Ephesians chapter 5, verses 24 and 25. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. There is a union that the eternal love instituted among men in paradise, whose fragrance lingers by his creating power. It is the covenant of holy matrimony. Without marriage, the life of man in this selfish world would be like an endless icy winter. Marriage ties a warm band of love around millions and produces precious family circles of natural love. Only believers experience all of this in the fullest sense. Their marriages are an image of the marriage of Christ and his church, his bride. By himself, what man can be to his wife, or excuse me, by himself, what man can be to his wife, what Christ is to the church. Can a man redeem his wife as Christ did the church? Can he give satisfaction for her sins, reconcile her with God, keep her in the faith until the end, and finally bring her into the glory of heaven? No, he can do none of these. But God be praised, none of this is required of him. What makes the marriage of believers an image of the marriage of Christ and his church is the husband's self-sacrificing love for his wife. St. Paul writes, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. How does Christ love his church? He loves her first of all from the heart, fervently, giving her drink with his own heart's blood. The Christian husband should love his wife no less fervently. Second, Christ loves his church, although she is full of stains. He does not separate from her. Instead, he covers her sins with his own righteousness. The Christian husband should love his wife just as patiently, despite her weaknesses and faults. He should bear them and not desire to be rid of her on account of them. Third, Christ loves his church with deeds so, so that she does not lack anything. He eternally cares for her. He is her intercessor with the Father. He protects her in danger. He comforts her in sorrow. And he fills her with peace and joy. The Christian husband should love his wife just as actively, caring for her body and soul, praying for and with her, providing for her, protecting and comforting her, and seeking to give her daily joy as his second self. Finally, Christ loves his church continuously. He loved her from eternity and chose her to be his bride. Therefore, even when she has proved unfaithful to him at times, he remains devoted in love to her until death. In this way also should a Christian husband constantly love his wife. No storm of unhappiness should extinguish the flames of his love, and even long years of invalidism should only make that love more fervent. The marriage of believers is also an image of the marriage of Christ and his church from the side of the wife. The apostle writes, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. The true church reveals and proves herself faithful by this alone. She is subject to Christ, who rules her with his word as the scepter of his eternal love. Every word of Christ is a command for her that she carries out with joy, even if it costs her blood and life, so too the Chris is the Christian wife. Her husband's scepter of love is holy to her. She does not seek to rule over anything, but instead she desires to serve him whom God has placed as her head. She does not require hard commands. Rather, she can learn how to care for her husband by observing with her eyes. She considers herself blessed, 
to be able to do this. O oh, blessed is the marriage in which the husband loves his wife as Christ loves his church. And blessed is the marriage in which the wife is subject to her husband as the church is to Christ. Such a marriage is the earthly reflection of the marriage of the bridegroom in heaven and his bride on earth. Lo, stained with blood, the Lamb of God, the bridegroom lies before thee, pouring out his life that he made to life restore thee. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us as always, and the Lord be with you throughout the weekend ahead.